Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum, where today we have a visitor bringing the craziest Lamborghini that will have been here at the barn. Crazier even than the Hurricane STO. We might have the two side by side later on, but we're going to be meeting up with Chiro from Petrol Hedonism and his Huber era Lamborghini Aventador Roadster. Now, one of the fun things about this particular car is that I actually very vividly remember filming it back in 2013. It's in Viola Ophelia, a different color purple to the STO, much darker, a bit more of red into the paint. We'll see it a little bit later on with a cream interior. Looks crazy with the kit that it has as well and very much on theme with V12s here at the Schmuseum, having had the recent arrivals of the Aston Martin DBS and the Ferrari GTC4 Lusso. Now, a few things have changed here, Brad. We've been playing around a bit, haven't we? Yep, we thought we'd put the Astons together for a few photos, seeing as we have all three together. Indeed, so the DBS drives on here very easily, obviously it's an auto. With the manual, and particularly with the clutch in the GT8, you do have to be a little bit conscious of reversing it onto the ramps, but I think they're looking pretty good like this. As you might be able to tell as we look around, things are getting a bit more full as well. We've popped the GT8 over on this side for the moment, just in the wing club, really. I've been daily driving the Roadster, the GTR Roadster, and it's actually quite funny because the weather has recently been horrendous, and this is caked in a layer of grime. Under the lights in here, it still manages to look quite red but mark my words this is for a car like this a bit yeah we're gonna have to do something with that at some point interestingly if you look around here though not a whole lot of space left <laughs> we're actually kind of full up in here for once so we're gonna start having the lifts up in the air with cars underneath i think the plan is the two black series will go where the lusso is the lusso will go to that side the gt8 will go to that side because the ford gt comes back here as well SF90 is going to be here soon. That will probably be plugged into the SeaTac Charge Storm, charging up. So the Roadster goes back over there. So three more cars have to go to that side. That's why we put in the lifts. Anybody wondering? And that's before the Amira and the Zenvo arrive. Yeah. There's lots of comments <laughs> saying why do we need lifts in such a big place. But when you have this many cars in here, we are very quickly losing space. The mezzanine will be starting soon. And that obviously means we have the one space where the RS3 is. But it is going to get pretty packed in here. I didn't even mention the GT500 is going to come back in summer. And there's that. So another car. So we're conscious that this might not actually last as long as we think it does. And we might need to put in three more lifts where those three are at the moment. Anyway, another thing that I know you guys talked about after I headed off last time is what's going on with the model cars. Now I have actually purchased a fair few more. So I think I worked out that there are 16 cars I've owned that I didn't have the models for. And I've been on a buying binge, picking up some of those, got to get a few booked in to be painted. But the other thing I was trying to work out was how best to fit them in. And I found somebody selling some additional brackets that you can adapt and use on the IKEA cabinets. They came with some uh, like acrylic or plexi shelves. Unfortunately, the shelves don't take the weight of the model cars. They kind of bend awkwardly. But in theory, I can get some custom made glass done. That's just a shelf I nicked from an empty area over here. Get some custom glass. We can start squeezing everything in a little bit more, put some more of these in. I think it looks a little bit better with more of the cars in a closer proximity. So we'll shuffle it all up. Everything comes up. Those were the, those two shelves, so to speak. This is going to look, it's really nerdy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And you have a lot of them, <laughs> but it's going to look so good. You know, when we've got this, I think it's going to be about 45 models so far and obviously going into the future. Now I've also unboxed for the first time just now, the Williams FW19. That's a Heinz Harald Franson version. I have the lovely model over there that I picked up the other day. And then next to it even is the lovely Zenvo TSRS. And that is the car that came to visit us in the Museum. We'll hopefully have an exact replica made of that. Maybe also available for you guys. That's the plan down the line. So this takes longer than you think to try and get all of these fiddly little brackets and screws attached yep. properly. You keep dropping screws and then <laughs> complaining. Yeah, I should probably take all the cars out so they don't like, so I don't risk anything going wrong, but that's something I want to crack on with. Obviously, Chero is coming down shortly, a couple of other guys as well. And yeah, looks set to be pretty wild with that Lambo here at the barn. There is the distinct sound of an event door outside. That's a very recognizable V12. It's quite loud. Yeah, rumbling away. Should we bring it inside? Pop the shutter up. And uh, the weather outside is really bad. So it's probably about to make a massive mess. We'll try and get him to stop just just inside the door, yep. not coming in too far. This thing looks absolutely bad. 
Yeah, that weather is not good at all. Wow. Look at that. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Tim. How are you Made doing? Welcome. Right. Crash, you alright? Good, mate. Come on. Wow, amazing. Yeah, yeah. We, we figured we'd let this like drip off a bit before yeah. we come into the middle. You're not going to personally dry her off then? Not right now. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> We're going to have to pull the car into the center to try and basically have the two Lambos together and have a better look around this. But firstly, that means a bit of a startup. It's ridiculous. There's nothing like it. We've heard a lot of modified Lamborghini Aventador exhausts across my channels over the year. Over the year? Over the years. Over the decades. This is just a little bit mad, really, this car. It's totally bonkers. The interior spec is beautiful as well. That's lovely. That is really... Is that enough noise, Tim? That's enough noise. <laughs> oh, well, welcome properly. Welcome Thank properly. You. Thank you. Great we, to be we, here. We do need to, I think, really talk about this because this is not so standard anymore. <sighs> Like this it whole... was a dream to buy her, yeah, and I never thought I'd be able to customise a Lamborghini, but we've gone into the stratosphere with it. It started off with the Huber body kit yeah. uh, from Sean, who became a friend of mine, and it just keeps going. Sure, I've just noticed even down here, you've got the bull graphics on the grills. So it's they've basically... recently been done. What's happened there is EBC brakes have yeah. machined those for us because to fit the bumper, the only final fixing point is up there so you can't have them built onto the bumper which uh, Sean had originally fixed them on so this is our third set of grills these are temporary but they've etched the ball onto well it's kind of fun yeah I mean basically exactly. you've got a completely new rear end you've got the larger quite distinct wing sitting up top it is in fact the same wing I was thinking it might it's be. exactly the same wing but what I wanted was a fixed wing so we've unplugged the wing yeah so I do have the fault come up once any every yeah. now and then but we wanted a fixed wing rather than, um, you know, like an SV may have or STO. That's quite funky though, because what it means is you keep the original design effectively. Exactly, yeah. Just position it up high. I was just fortunate enough to find one for sale uh, where okay. they stripped a car and we had it repainted, fixed on. We've had these machined and made for the car. Yep. Full blown uh, custom bespoke personalized exhaust. Mm -hmm. That was brilliant because literally I bought the car, put it in hiding at supercar service, and got a DM from Alpha Performance Fabrications in Wellingborough saying they'd built this exhaust for an SV. Yeah. They've been following me a couple of years, love what I do and what I'm about, and said, do, Is there any way I can help them with the Lamborghini Club or anything else? Okay. Get them out there. I was like, cool. well, I've just bought an Aventador. We'll, we'll build you the exhaust for sure. <laughs> that so, has to go on, it fits it. Supercar service obviously got it fitted for us, mm -hmm. but they built it for us. We've actually got custom wheels arriving from West Forged. They're okay. being uh, forged at the moment, that's the next month. And yep. Sean is sending me a full carbon bonnet because he's literally intrigued to see how the exposed shield line will go up the bonnet as it's yep. exposed line as well. But full front cone, full rear cone, the thing about this kit was it's plug and play. Yeah. So we can put this car back to stock within 48 hours. Right. So you have, yeah. Okay. We haven't dropped sense. into anything. It's literally. Yeah. And this is the first Huber era kit that was ever actually fabricated. Yeah. So it's the first solid kit to touch and it clipped on with no modifications. Perfect. Which, it's, it's pretty mean up here. I mean, when you're looking, not sure if you can see this properly on the camera, when you're looking down, this is, this is like angry. This is, yeah pretty wild and you're in a roadster so you can take the roof off it's phenomenal should I take the roof off <laughs> <laughs> see wait this is the like test of can one remember it's been a while since <laughs> the roof because you can stow away the two panels up front we can yeah some stuff in there probably we're not going to right now we're just going to take them off but front seats need to move forwards to begin with okay Obviously slide the seat forward car covers uh, seat covers sorry seat yeah actually covers. you should come come and have a look at this interior can we can I cheaply yeah, can, remove the seat show, cover yeah. you can We'll see it more when the um, roof is off, but cream interior. 
stunning choice against the purple. And I'm usually in the jeans or something, so I had to protect the seat. <laughs> so you have to do that. Yeah. And then for the roof, you... Which side is supposed to go first? That Passenger side. comes up first. It's pretty easy. And then we're left with roof panels. And it just, it just absolutely changes the car because the sound, the visceral experience of the yeah. car, it's, it's a posing car, isn't it, Tim? It's not really a driving car. <laughs> the only problem is we're now walking around with roof panels. Let's Can we carefully floor. put them on the floor? Is that okay? Yeah. They're safe here next to the Aston. <laughs> Made you drag those off. But take yourself back to 2013 when you first saw her. Yeah. What were your feelings? Because the colour was I thought it was crazy. stunning. I mean, at the time, so fun fact from my side, back at the time, I had my Audi R8 Spider, which I had wrapped yeah. in midnight purple. So I've always been a purple car fan, but literally way back then, you know, owning a purple mid-engine baby supercar. Yeah. When I saw this for the first time, I was like, this car is seriously cool. Like I remember making yeah. the I remember making yeah. the video about it because it was obviously the 50th anniversary year. That's right. Yeah. Lamborghini Which was founded is, back in the badges in there. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Just inside the apron. Lamborghini was founded back in 1963. In 2013, they had massive celebrations, the huge Grande Giro tour around Italy, and then in the UK did that big event mm. where I saw this car, which was organised by all of the dealers coming together. Um, obviously, it looks a little bit different now. Absolutely. With the whole. Well, the thing is, I bought the car. Uh, which I didn't expect to do at that time, uh, coming out of lockdowns and just setting up a new car show businesses. Bought the car because of the colour. Could have bought an Aventador any time, but it was this yeah. colour that made me buy. There's only two Aventadors in this country, I believe. One's the SV Road, so one's this one. But then Scoot feeling. sent me the video and I was like, even more reason, the car's very well known. Everybody's <laughs> going to know it's a 2013. To make it the pinnacle of petrol hedonism and everything, it... Yeah. We should, talk, we should talk about petrol hedonism. For those who don't know, yeah. the events and the things you do, because I came to petrol hedonism live briefly yeah, absolutely. Thank when you. I got back into the country last time. You had my SLS there, yeah. you had the M3 there. M3 was on the BOTB stand, wasn't absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah. and I'm sure we're going to be doing some more things with it. Yeah. But you're putting together some pretty like, big events and stuff. Coming out of the lockdowns, it was really weird because everything I'd done up to that point was at the Chambrook Hotel. But 2017-18 saw us locked down a whole area and people have said to me oh you've outgrown the Schaumburg but I couldn't see that or understand it yeah coming out of the lockdowns some of the collaborations started building and then Max Power Reunion page asked me if I'd help him host an event so we did a Max Power Reunion at Toaster started finding other venues started doing the tucked events um, and everything at the Schaumburg used to build mm -hmm. towards Supercar Sunday which is the biggest event of the year now everything builds towards Petrol Edison Live at Nebworth so yep. whether it's uh, small events at the hotel or bigger events we've tucked, Max Power Union, working with Auto Finesse on some projects as well, they will all build towards Petrolism Live, where we bring everything together. So yeah, it's a for sure. feast for all petrol heads. And yeah, you, you popped in and uh, it was great to have you there. But obviously Richard Rawlins was there. Yeah, that was and cool. And we're building the event again for this year, exactly where it ended last year, and make it even bigger and better. So hopefully you'll Sounds be there. Sounds fun. I hope so. I hope so. Looking forward to it later in the year. And I mean, this... This is cool to see here, you know. I mean, actually, it's quite interesting for me because when I started doing the spec for the STO, I was going to ask I you this. I did consider yeah. your colour, Viola Ophelia, because yeah. I knew the colour from before. I saw not all that long ago a Diablo in this colour. Right. Um, a Diablo when I was visiting Lamborghini Pangborn. So certainly it was a colour on my radar, as was Viola Pacifé. I'm sure yeah. you know Pacifé has quite, become quite a common colour. And then that came along, that ridiculously glittery, metallic... Viola Bass. <laughs> almost yeah. pinky purple. And it was like, it just kind of suits the, this period, the 2020s, right? I think Larry over the top colors is, is the thing now. Yeah, and it goes back to the Jamiroquai SE30, that kind of the yeah, other purple yeah, yeah. I, I think any car in purple, if Rick Frost has done a song, Purple Lamborghini, then it's got to be something that's pretty <laughs> epic. Yeah. Well, we're in a small club of purple Lamborghini yeah. owners. <laughs> <laughs> but it suits it, it's spot on. It looks epic, to be honest. Taking a proper look at this thing. Just trying to think what else we've done. Obviously, the Italian flags went on because we were painting it mm. around the time of the Euros and Italy beat England. So <laughs> it was more about the Italian flags. That's painted on. That's uh, the stickered and then lacquered in. Ah, we okay. um, went matte black here and in the sills because um, Sean hasn't got any um, side sills or anything. But that didn't really it gives matter. gives it a so, bit of the matching design. Yeah. It's cool, it's cool, and um, it's the UFO ball. Exactly. I've been told it's a pretty epic number plate, which I bought 
10 years ago yeah. when we had a Gallardo Spider at that time. But yeah. this number plate for £250 from uh, DVLA through Reg Transfers was basically destined for a V12 doors up Lambo. It's all about <laughs> the drama and the theatre. The thing I always say about the Aventadors, and as I said, I'll, I'll confess, I'm not the biggest, let's say, Aventador fan, is that if you ask a kid to draw a supercar, that's what they'll draw. Yeah. That wedge, the wedge, that distinct yeah. wedge. There's nothing else quite like it. It's the definitive supercar. Like spot the Quintosh on. was on my wall. You're yeah. younger than me, so I'd imagine it was a Diablo or... Oh, I've never really been the oh. biggest Lamborghini guy, but I, I know where you're coming from. A bit the Murcielago probably yeah. more. But yeah. And for me, that, that wedge shape, the Countach, is just still there with me. And I've got the opportunity to drive a Countach to Belgium and back. Um, Zach, you know Zach, yeah. uh, is, has, has asked me to drive his Countach to Belgium for the event at GR8 next month. And cool. then I f need to find a driver for my Aventador. So, <laughs> <You'll> <laughs> a manage. bit of a quandrum. So, ladies and gentlemen, if we now leave the office, you will see we have descended into football chaos. But it's safe football chaos. Up here. It is safe football chaos. It's a very soft ball. No cars are really being hit. I like that after all the amazing skill we had the last 20 minutes, cameras have gone down and it's awful. You missed all the skill. Literally, there was skill everywhere. That, that, they actually were doing really well. Now the camera's on, it's going very wrong. Tim woke up today and chose violence because I've had this ball kicked as hard as he can at me about five times. <laughs> <laughs> like that. I really <laughs> hope that was caught in the background. <laughs> now, you join us about an hour later. I've just been taking a look around Chiro's Aventador Viola. However, if we look over here, they are still going. The children are still at it, playing football. To the point we've actually even got shoes coming off now. It's getting a bit serious with this ball. So, I think we've lost everyone to football for the rest of the day. I don't know if you're going to see any more of the vlog, guys. This, this could be it. This could be the outro. They've got to get tired at some point, right? They have to stop eventually, surely. But there's no end in sight for now. So, yeah, let's see what happens. So, as we said, Josh over there has taken his shoes off. And we have them here. So what I'm thinking it would be really funny to do is go and hide one of them. Oh, he didn't notice. He didn't notice. There you go. So we've buried that in there. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's just pop it just underneath the steering wheel outside and we'll see how long it takes that to get found. Hello, I, I don't know. Where is your other shoe? Is this going to be like a... Do you, know, do you know who does know? The guys here watching right now, they know where it is because I've shown them where I put it. Oh, I didn't even... I, I don't know why Brad's up there. Right, let's have a... <laughs> He's up there to get the other ball. <laughs> he managed to find it. Okay, that's really quite annoying that you... I don't know, I thought the F1 car might have just been the, the place to put it. Okay, I guess next time I need to work on my hiding skills, but... More? He's found his, uh, he's found his shoe. Now, I... 20 seconds, I'm gonna, I'm gonna face this way. Okay, so we have his shoe, he's given it to me to hide, and we don't know where we're gonna put it. Now, let's see if he spots this one. Look again, he found it really quickly, so he gave it back to me and said, hide it again, make it harder this time. So, so I did. It's not, it's not there. No, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that much. That have you double blocked me? <laughs> that would have been quite good, wouldn't yeah, it? That would have been quite cool. What, what is going on? So, a little while ago, Scoot took his shoes off to play football. So I hid one of his shoes. He found it incredibly quickly in the F1 car. So he gave it back to me and said, try harder. So <laughs> he's now looking for his shoe. <laughs> He issued the challenge. He issued the challenge. It's his own fault if it never comes back. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Until I start a car. Oh, I, I think I'm... <laughs> I, think I think you might know where it is. When I start a car, <laughs> we have a problem. Yes. Oh my God, it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's found it. All right, go on, go and get your other one back and put them together. How grown up are we or aren't we? Very. <laughs> At least we're responsible when it comes to driving the cars. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Brad's attempting skids on the go-kart. This has all just descended into absolute chaos. We have become, you guys have become absolute children. Is this where Brad just does the beep? <laughs> We've already done one of those a minute ago. Another beep. <laughs> so it's about 20 minutes later and- I'm, I'm baffled. <laughs> Josh still has okay, my, my other one is still over there. I'm worried that I was going to lose the other one. It's over there somewhere. Right. 
Tom, let's go this way. I'm, I've got a funny feeling that it's this way. Okay. Brad's doing more skids. He's That's... making the most of the rainwater that hmm. the Aventador left, obviously, when it came in. Because the go-kart does do quite good power oversteer when it's him. wet. He's loving it. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost it. So we're now, it's no 10-pin bowling, it's six, six golf barrel bowling with Brad in the go-kart. I'd, I'd rather not, that could he be was painful. Quite close. He was quite close. <laughs> Big barrels. He'll say he was miles away, as he always does. Like he says he was miles away from the wall when he went into it. <laughs> Okay guys, we are going to now head down and get the football and maybe resume some of the kickabout. <laughs> Let's see how long it takes him. I believe that Scoots found his shoe. I honestly think it was about 40 minutes later. So when I drove past you the first time and you looked for it behind me, it wasn't there. I then picked it up and had it behind me the whole time. <laughs> And then ended up over there. My camera's really died because of that. I'm... <laughs> I can't believe that. Fun in this museum. Time for UFO ball to head out. Chira's leaving, Lewis is leaving with him, and then Scoot will be leaving, I think, very shortly too. Here we go. One thing Aventador's definitely do, which is not departing subtly. You can hear that car a long way away. I've been putting together a few more of the shelves in here, so this is actually coming along really well. And thinking about the extra models, I've ordered a fair few more. I'm gonna go through this completely when I've got the new ones all back here. But basically I'm gonna use the bottom of these cabinets for some of my racing helmets and other stuff that I've got memorabilia stuff to display so that's all really cool loving it um everything in here needs a little bit of a tidy up i'm not gonna lie oh getting caught in the uh in the thing but yeah i mean a busy day filled with football and lamborghinis but probably the craziest lambo to visit us here at the Schmuseum, i reckon anyway i think that's pretty much it for today until next time